Welcome to Root Words, a podcast that explores agriculture and cooking's role in connecting us to our landscape and our communities. I'm Stephen Abatel. Root Words is a collaboration between Vermont Farmers Food Center, Shrewsbury Agricultural Education and Arts Foundation, and many other community members. The project began in 2017 and was made possible by support from the National Endowment for the Humanities, as well as from this community. Throughout this podcast, you're going to be hearing stories from people around the Rutland County region in the heart of Vermont, a region rich in agriculture, family farms, a region that's a pastoral working landscape. These stories are going to be each little windows into what a regional food system really looks like on the community level. We're excited to introduce you to some passionate folks working with the land and with food and bringing communities together. So please pull up a chair and enjoy. At the start of this year's legislative session in Vermont, we took a closer look at the campaign to make school meals universal. It's one of the really important food access issues that the State House took on this year, and with the legislative session coming to a close, we've decided to check back in with Teddy Wazizak, Hunger Free Vermont's Universal School Meals Campaign Manager, for an update on what's coming out of the legislative session. We spoke with Teddy and School Nutrition Director Harley Sterling at length on this topic in Episode 19, Universal School Meals. And if you hadn't heard that episode, it's worth going back and giving it a listen before listening to this episode. Good to see you again, Teddy. Thanks for for having some time to circle back with us and and give us an update. How things been? Absolutely happy to be back. Things have been really great for the Universal Meals campaign. Um, Do you want me to dive right into it or... Yeah, yeah. Give us a give us a recap about um, kind of what you guys were were looking for with the with the campaign and and where we're at at this point. Sure. So I think last time that I was here, the bill was being worked on in the House Education Committee, um, and there were a lot of really good ideas floating around. That everyone was agreed on getting universal school meals done one way or another. Um, as has always been true, the sticking point came in the details. Um, but we ended up in a really good spot. The House uh, Education Committee passed a bill, and it's been tweaked a little bit since then, but the main uh, framework of that bill is still in place, uh, and it has been passed out of the House and the Senate and has uh, is waiting for the governor. The bill is stuck in a bit of legislative limbo right now. At the end of the session, there are always a whole ton of bills that get passed in the last couple of weeks. Some of them, like our universal meals bill, are 10 pages long. Some of them, like the housing bills, are over 250 pages long. And there is a set number of legislative staff that uh, proofreads everything before it gets into the governor. So our bill is in that legislative limbo right now, waiting to be final proofreading, crossing the T's, dotting the I's, making sure the periods and the commas are all in place, and then it'll be sent off to the governor. But what happened policy-wise, what happened with the bill is this. It is a one-year extension of the Universal School Meals Program, paid for out of the education fund, which has a record surplus this past year. So, uh, you know, we're able to do this. No new taxes, no new fees, no raising taxes. Uh, we are able to pay for the bill this year. And so how this will look in practice is that schools will opt into the federal and state provisions that help them uh, fund their school meal programs to feed all students at no cost to themselves or their families next year. What that does is it allows the legislature to collect what I'll call real data. And I'm doing, for those listening, I'm doing the air quotes. Uh, When I say real data, what I mean is this. We've had universal school meals in Vermont for the past two years, but the past two years have been anything but normal in terms of participation rates, school attendance in general. Uh, You know, for for the first year of universal school meals, a lot of the schools were physically closed and the meals were being delivered to students and things weren't being tracked as closely as they often are. 
So what this one year extension does is it allows uh, for the legislature and the agency of education to collect data of what a quote normal school year with universal school meals will be next year. Uh, so that will allow them to collect participation rates, see how many kids are eating which meals, uh, which uh, meals are getting higher increases in participation. So in other words, are more people eating breakfast now than they used to as compared to the kids who are now eating lunch when they did not used to, um, things like that. And then we will be able to come back next year for the legislative session with some real good data uh, and be able to figure out how much exactly this thing is going to cost long term. Um, and in the meantime, while we're figuring that out, there is a <laughs> the, the one change that the Senate did make was they put in a little sentence at the end that said it is the intent of the General Assembly to continue universal school meals permanently and figure out the funding for that. Um, so they officially wrote that down. We have a law that will hopefully be signed. Um, that says that universal meals will continue for one more year and that it's the intent of the legislature to figure out how to do it permanently. That's great. I, I think the last time we spoke, um, the, the, the bill had gotten pared down to only uh, being focused on universal breakfast. It, is that how it came has come out of the session? Nope, nope. It is both breakfast and lunch, full universal school meals next year. Um, breakfast only was offered as a compromise, uh, really numbers wise. It's just, of course, less, it, it's just actually less expensive to produce breakfast, just like the actual cost per plate is less. Um, but it's also just less expensive to do on a statewide basis. So that was offered as like a compromise, a watered down version, um, but we pushed back strongly on that because while we of course think that every student deserves a free breakfast, we also think that every student deserves a free lunch. And one without the other is basically all of the hassle because like, it is, there are administrative levers to pull and paperwork to fill out to actually stand up this program. So universal breakfast is all of the hassle with none of the benefits of universal school meals because with breakfast only you still have to you know the school still have to do all their tracking and administrative work parents still have to uh fill out the complicated free and reduced lunch applications um cash registers would still be in cafeterias for lunchtime just not for the breakfast so it, it's all of the hassle none of the benefit um so it was being talked about a bit but uh we pushed back pretty strongly on that and ultimately we got this bill which is both meals next year Awesome. So that's the, so that's what we can expect. Expecting that the governor uh, signs this into law. That's what we can expect in communities around Vermont this next school year. Yep. Yep. Um, so the governor will have, like I said, the bill sort of stuck in this legislative limbo. Um, once it gets to the governor's desk, he has five days to sign it, veto it, or allow it to go into law without his signature. Um, we have every reason to believe that the governor is going to sign this bill. We have not heard um, really anything serious that he is thinking about vetoing it. He said it as much in his press conference on Tuesday, this past Tuesday, um, where he said, unless there is a quote, <laughs> unless there's quote, a technical error with the bill, which there won't be a technical error with the bill, because that's why they're doing all of this proofreading right now. Um, so he always likes to leave himself a little out, which I understand. Um, but he said it's he, he believes that he'll be signing this bill. Um, he expressed some skepticism about figuring out long term funding for mm -hmm. universal meals, um, which is which, which is the question. That is the question that is left. And that'll be the question that the legislature has to answer next year. Um, but he has been pretty clear from the beginning that he would veto a bill if it either raised taxes or imposed new taxes. Mm -hmm. And our bill does neither. Um, so we feel very comfortable with um, where the governor is at. But I will say, as the dedicated field organizer that I am, better safe than sorry. We can never be sure. So the best thing uh, for folks to do is to call the governor's office at 802-828-3333. And it'll most likely just get a voicemail and just leave a quick voicemail asking him to support S100, the Universal School Meals Bill. Uh, it really does make a difference. 
Well, it sounds like it's uh, it's great news uh, on this particular bill. Um, and w- so where do you think, though, for you, where does the work go from here? For you, maybe personally, in your role at Hugger Free Vermont, or, or just kind of what are the next uh, next things to set your eyes to? Yeah, totally. So I'll, I'll answer that in two. I'll answer for myself personally, but also Hunger Free Vermont in general. Um, largely, Hunger Free is going to be shifting from we'll still be doing advocacy for universal meals permanently but over the next couple of months over the summer it's going to be education and assistance for schools for school nutrition professionals for parents and students telling them what this law does right because it's easy enough for us to put all these words on paper have the governor sign the thing uh, but there is now work to do. There are multiple federal provisions. You pick a certain provision to get a certain amount of funding for a certain f- uh, federal program or a certain school nutrition program. Um, and what it'll mean for most schools is opting into provision two. Um, and I'm not going to go into the technicalities of what that means, because all it means is that every student will, all it means is universal school meals. Um, but there is paperwork to do and education to do. And uh, there is still, we'll still have to do some collection of the free and reduced lunch applications for next year because it plays in the long-term data that will eventually be phased out. So there's a ton of work to do. There is a ton of, um, like I said, education and assistance. And that's what Hunger Free Vermont will be largely focusing on with universal school meals. Myself, I am going to be assisting in that education and assistance work. I'm going to be learning a lot. I have been 100%. I know everything there is to know about universal school meals. I guarantee it. Uh, But Hunger Free Vermont does a lot of other advocacy work on a lot of different nutrition um, programs, a lot of three squares advocacy doing whatever we can to make state agencies and the state government work better uh, for Vermonters and helping folks get connected to food. And so there's still universal school meals, S100, it's a great first step, but there is still plenty of other advocacy work to do. Um, And that's personally what I will be moving towards. Yeah, and and on that note, uh, I'm curious to what you know. Besides S100, where you've been focusing uh, for for some time now, what were some of the other things out of the legislative session that were of note to you? So one thing I will say that what the, the legislature did, but it was also the governor's office, was money for. Um, extending the farm to school and early childhood grants. And this was, these grants were something that were passed um, last session as a one-year deal. And uh, the governor proposed, when the governor proposed his budget to the legislature, he kept that money in there for the farm to school grants um, and the local purchasing incentives. And the legislature worked with him to not only keep that money in place, but they actually increased it a little bit. Um, So not only will not only will schools be able to, will students and families be getting these uh, breakfasts and lunches at no cost next year, there's more money and more local food is going to be going into those schools next year than the past year as well. Um, So that was, you know, it was a, everyone agreed on universal school meals, but it was (laughs) knock down, drag out fight to figure out what bill to pass and what deal to make and all these things. And, but the local purchasing incentive and the farm to school early childhood grants Um, it was sort of not a topic of conversation, which is almost better (laughs) in the state house. Um, everyone was just agreed that we're not only going to keep these farm to school and early childhood grants and the local purchasing incentives in, uh, we're going to fund them moving forward and we're actually going to expand them a bit. And that was just really, it was just nice to see that, um, that that the program had proven its worth in the eyes of the governor and the administration and the legislature and that they decided to continue and expand that. Um, So that was really exciting. Well, Teddy, there's a a bunch of great stuff happened uh, and and you did a lot of great work to, to support these things. So I hope you had time to take maybe a little, a little uh, victory lap before jumping into the next uh, piece of your work to support, you know, schools and school districts here. Well, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. And I just also want to thank all of the folks yourself who helped spread the word, all of the folks who stepped up in one way or another for this campaign. Um, It really made all the difference in the world. And it's been so cool to see 
um, in their own words, little old lunch ladies coming down to the state house advocating um, for universal meals and just seeing and, and students. I had middle schoolers and high schoolers and folks from all over the state in Montpelier advocating for this. And it was just really inspiring to see. Um, and I will say, I will absolutely be taking a victory lap once the governor actually signs the thing. <laughs> All right. Hope I hope that you do. Um, and thanks again for for spending some time to to reconnect with us and and let us all know, let the listeners know what's um, what's going on with school meals and and what we can expect in the future here. Of course. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. This episode was produced by Stephen Abatel. Special thanks to Teddy Wazazak and Hunger Free Vermont. To learn more about Hunger Free Vermont's work to support equitable access to nutrition, visit www.hungerfreevt.org. Our musical themes are by the Salt Ash Serenaders. We are a project of the Vermont Farmers Food Center and SAGE. Thank you all for listening and for being a part of our local food system. We'll catch you next time on Root Words.